السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته مقعي قوى عبد الرحمن حاجايان عبكوس وكنا المقالة من مينيابوليس وحاشرف وينيا دمان جاليد الصومالية كنا القبل كان مينيابول قبل كان من صورة جارهان مقالة من مينيابوليس إن عن ما أنت كسوق بقلنا كلن كان كلن دوديت كان دحمر الدونا مشرحين تا وشرحن دغ مقالة كلن كاسو نو بلعبن دونا دقيقة دير جدهود بحكوس اللي سيني هاي دود دحمر الدونا شن مشرح وأوتر تمية دغ مقالة من مينيابوليس وحن جعل هاي إن عند جيس النو سؤالها لو يدينا يوم عنا هلا يجواب تأكبر حندونان أو أح رنهانتي مد موجينسة وحقبت كأيلان دونان مقالة من يابولس يودا شقينت إلا يلان هاين بلشيدة الصومالية وكسر دوادا وما سنتين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Before I start talking about anything, I would like to thank the organizers of this event. They have been working so hard for over a week to make this thing happen. And even though even though whatever you do, sometimes you still come at some clicks. But we'll try to our best to make things go on tonight. I might forget some of the names of the people, of the organizers. Please forgive me if I do so. I would like to thank Osman K, Atukadir, AK, Nimbo, Jibril up here, Zamba, Abdrashid right here, Somali media, Muna, friends from the Voice of uh, Volunteers of American School, Everybody would like to thank you so much for, for doing what you have done for, for the behalf of the community. Also, before we start the program, on behalf of the Somali community, I would like to thank our mayoral candidates for agreeing and being here tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you. Whether or not you are a very important leader, friend of the Somali community and we always listen and take advice and follow your leadership. So this is relationship is not only of the sea. You all great all of you are proven leaders of this community and we are part of the parcel of this community. Thank you for your leadership. What do you have done so far? As I was driving over here and running between a couple of destinations it came to me that how much we all have in common. All of us, the public, the Somali community, the, the people who are before here, the candidates, even the press, we all share something in common, which is American dream. That's what brings us together. American dream in 1931, I will just give you some definition. James T. Adams have defined American dream as fall. Life should be better, richer, fuller for everyone with the opportunity for each according to their ability, regardless of their social class and the commissions of birth. That's the essence of our dream. That's the ethos of this nation. That if you work hard, if you do the right thing, you can succeed. As a part of the Somali community, we are not asking anything. We are not asking a hangout. We, are not, we need a partnership. We need a egalitarian environment where we can succeed in our business and, and schools. So that's what we are asking for and that's what we are fighting and that's the reason we are involved into the political process in this city and this state. I can continue unless I thank the Somalis who came and, so, and, and, and I'm voted for one of the Somali candidates. I can't thank him enough, the DFO body, for nominating a person who is descended from Somalia. That gives us hope. That's what is going to 
I can share something with my children and their children that if you work hard, if you do the right thing, you can make it in this country and in this city. So as a Somali, we have few dreams and I would like to share that with the candidates. The first of our dream is Minneapolis to become the best city in the world. That's our dream number one. Meaning that Minneapolis creating abundance of wealth and opportunity for everybody. Whether you are Latino, whether you are Somali, whether you are from Norway or Denmark, whether you are from Africa, we need that egalitarian family where everybody can succeed. And you can succeed city by itself. In the community of the people, the collective community of the city have to succeed in order for city to succeed. The Native American have to succeed. The Somali have to succeed. Every part of them have to succeed in life so the city can be proud of this. And that's what we expected, the leadership from each and every one, even if you don't become a mayor city of Minneapolis. My personal dream, hopefully, hopefully five years from now, I would like to take flight from MSB Airport to Mogadishu, where I was born. <laughs> and there's something we can do collectively that Somalia is coming back, and the only thing it needs is a partnership. We can sit up in the office, we can establish a trade relationship with East Africa. A good leader is the one who utilizes the strength of his people. All those people you see from Somali, all of them are very smart, hardworking. We need to use them so we can establish opportunity both here at home and back home in Africa. With that said, I will keep my mouth shut and stop talking. <laughs> I'm just feeling it, I just want to keep going. Yeah? Keep going. Anyway, thank you for being here, I really appreciate it. It's been an opportunity for Safari, my friends, my business. Uh, it's one of the things I've never imagined when I was doing my business plan, opening here, becoming this. A center for the community, center for the city of Minneapolis. And any day, any time, if anybody would like to come and partner, so we can do something collectively for the community, please do so. We're ready, we're open, and we're willing to partner with everybody to make Minneapolis the better city in the world. The program will be moderated tonight by two smart people. But before we get to that, I would like to call my friend Jamal to the podium. Say a few words. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Thank you, Abdul Rahman, for your leadership and effort for bringing us together tonight. It takes a uh, magnificent amount of energy and resource to be able to put together in an event like this. And I would like to uh, uh, thank him for his uh, considerable effort. But I like to be brief because we're not here to hear from people like me. You're here, you're here to hear from people at the stage, one of who will be elected as Minneapolis mayor come next November. But I think it's perfectly fitting to talk about a little bit about the political process. A month ago, as I already alluded to, the people in War 6 in Minneapolis show up on a precinct caucus in large numbers. A little over 300 of them ended up going to the endorsement convention of their award them to endorse a candidate. So tonight, that candidate is the one step closer of becoming the first Somali person in Minneapolis Council. And that is a big deal. It is a big deal. 
Contrast that with a little over two years ago, a similar candidate ran what used to be all district, Senate District 6 to 1, now 62, in a special election and got about eight, over 800 votes, a loss. So the question becomes, how come? How come a candidate with more total votes ended up losing? But one with less vote, about 300 or so, is a serious contender, a serious candidate for a public office. And the answer lies in the process. Each happened at a different phase of the process. In the early stages of the political process, the pool of voters are smaller than latter phases of the process. What that means is candidates have to be able to convince more people and their messages, which means much work and a lot more harder task to be able to accomplish. So that the candidate with more serious shot at success utilized and leveraged in the process, whereas the candidate who got more total votes but ended up losing tried to circumvent the process. So delegates to the Minneapolis City Convention, your neighbors have entrusted you with a lot of power. So exercise your power judiciously. Your vote can make a difference in Minneapolis. It can help Minneapolis to become a better city, depending on which leader you decided to support in the Minneapolis DFL Convention in June. So the political process can be also utilized in similar fashion in, and to influence what leaders do after elections. So the Somali DFL caucus, which I'm one of the leaders of, was established to support that effort. We have been helping to build a bridge between our community and our party close to a decade now. The Somali DFL caucus works to recruit promote and mentor emerging relations craft. In 2013, for instance, there were close to $200,000 allocated for Oxford College to train Somali teachers in the education bill. There were more than $400,000 allocated in the JAPS bill to help Somali doctors who have been trained overseas to become licensed so they can practice medicine here in Minneapolis and be able to serve the community. There was about $175,000 to fund homeless shelters that serve women and children in the jobs bill. There was language to cover a cutting edge therapies and early screening for children with autism in the health and human services bill. There was a language to fund women's reproductive health services. These are made possible by leveraging on in the legislative process. So the process is important for us. It allows leverage and creation of synergy. It allows incremental improvement. So if you are here tonight, you are certainly part of that process. And please stay with it. So with that, I wanted to end with one last announcement, and because this process can be very complex, we're fortunate to have people like Verifo who are presenting and, and will be distributing information about the ranking choice uh, voting process that has been recently implemented in Minneapolis. So they are sitting in the back of their table, they have a lot of information, and they're wearing a, a, a blue shirt, so when you, do get an, when you do get an opportunity, please do stop by on their, uh, uh, on their table. So with that, I'm going to hand it over Mustafa and Ilan, who are going to be moderating two very important uh, emerging leaders in our community. Uh, back to you guys. Thank you. Each candidate will be given two minutes for opening statement and um, 90, 90 minutes for closing remarks. Seconds. 90 seconds. 90 seconds. <laughs> wow, that's going to be a long night. <laughs> Uh, so 90 seconds. Uh, we're expected to cover at least four questions that are going to be coming, uh, that are pre-prepared by the moderators. 
and each of those questions will be um, 90 minutes, 90 seconds, to answer each question. There will also be um, questions from uh, the audience, and they will also be 90 seconds. In the previous question, audience is expected to remain quiet, and I mean quiet. There will be a round of applause at the beginning and at the end of our uh, forum. Only the moderators will be allowed to ask questions. Uh, um, so we will get started. I will ask. Okay. Um, we are also asking people to send in their um, questions. This is uh, your chance. So our first question is going to be focused on job creation and the prevention of discrimination on the workplace. Um, the question asks, what's your plan to help create jobs and prevent discrimination on the workplace in the city of Minneapolis? Oh. Thank you. Uh, so first, we'll do introductions. So we'll start with Jackie Jerry Holmes. And Abdulali sitting here at the front will be um, keeping time. Maga Aigua, Jackie Cherry Holmes, and I'm running for mayor of the city of Minneapolis. I'm running to build a city where everyone is welcome, everyone is valued, and everyone has opportunities. Where all our young people have a brilliant future ahead of them. Where everyone is housed, everyone is working, where our communities are safe, and our police and communities work together, where we have transit that connects us to each other and connects us to jobs, and where everyone is united in one city. The Somali community has really stepped up to become an active part of our city, and you are to be complimented. Our mayor must work with you to listen to, represent, and address your needs and concerns. And you deserve specifics. You deserve to know what we're going to do. Not what we're thinking about, but what we're going to do. In order to do that, I put together a specific action plan and it's sure to grow over the coming months. But I want you to know specifically what I'm going to do to put people back to work, to create a safer city, to hold City Hall accountable, and to make Minneapolis a more sustainable city. I know our city's government, and I'm driven to get things done for our neighborhoods. My experience as the City Council President, and my work in communities has given me the head of an insider, with the heart of an outsider. Minneapolis is a city that has a lot of ideas and initiative, but we need leadership to harness this energy to build a better city, a city that works for everyone. I'm experienced, I'm qualified, and I am ready to be your, your next mayor. Thank you very much. Minneapolis. <laughs> As I have been talking with folks all across the city and many of you over the last months and years in Minneapolis, I find that we all pretty much want the same thing. We want a city that's working and working for everybody. We want a city that's prospering and prospering for everybody. And we want a city that's unified, where people are brought together and not driven apart by differences. Uh, a city that works is one where you are getting the basic services that you need. You call 911 and the police come and they treat you well. And you have a basic, fair, open budget as well. So you know everything that we are doing as a city. A city that's prospering is one where we're inviting folks to come here and we are creating jobs and opportunities for everybody who's here in the city. And we will talk more, I think, in the next question about what that looks like. And a city that's united is one where we are working to eliminate the gaps that divide us. We have big opportunity gaps in the city of Minneapolis, and we need to eliminate those to move forward together as a city. The Somali community in Minneapolis is a large and powerful force. 
And we need to make sure that our city of the future is being built by everybody, with everybody, and for everybody. Because the Minneapolis of 2040 does not look like the Minneapolis of 2014. And we need to start building the city now to look the way it needs to look in 2040 with everybody, everybody there. So we're going to talk more throughout this evening about what all of that means. Um, but I do ask for your support for Mayor. Mae Dornesa Fadla. I'm sorry, I haven't been uh, paying too much attention. What are you doing at two minutes? Second minute. Oh, um, oh, okay. Good evening, I'm Don Samuels. And um, candidate for mayor, I want to be your next mayor. Uh, I feel very comfortable here. I feel that this is my crowd because I'm an immigrant that came to America 43 years ago uh, in New York and uh, as, uh, from the country of Jamaica. I came with $83 and uh, no family. So I know what it means to be uh, working full time, going to school full time, and working a job and a half, and working three jobs in the summer. And uh, I know what it means to have to adjust to the culture, to be misunderstood, to be feel intimidated by the police, and to feel like an outsider. And so one part of my uh, agenda is certainly to help the adjustment of the immigrant community, especially our young people, so that that transition doesn't end up in tragedies, like joining gangs in order to feel protected, or uh, settling for less. And so I, I'm going to be the kind of mayor that can bring this city together, immigrants, non-immigrants, poor and rich, middle class, uh, people in all parts of the city, because I understand these issues. I'm going to be the kind of mayor that prioritizes public safety to make sure our young people are safe in schools and on the streets, and that our moms and dads can walk the streets without fear of being attacked. I'm going to be the kind of mayor that is interested in schools and working with the school system to make sure all our children are doing well. One of the worst things to see is a child not doing well in class and nobody is reaching out to say what's happening with you. I'm going to make sure that all our children feel like they belong and that all our children are learning. He's the Warren. Galapan Axon, Maragua, Gary Chef. My name is Gary Chef, and I'm running for Mayor of Minneapolis because I believe in the most progressive city in America, every neighborhood should make progress. For the last 12 years, it has been my honor to represent and work with you, the Somali community, as a member of the Minneapolis City Council. When you represent Lake Street, you represent the world. And I have had the honor to work closely with the community members, with business owners, with the largest mosque in the state of Minnesota that is right here in the Ninth Ward. And throughout all the time, I have developed deep friendships and a deep appreciation for the work that we do together as a community every single day. Part of that work means encouraging new leadership, encouraging new leadership for our young, encouraging new political leadership. I was so proud to have Mahmoud Noor as co-chair of my campaign for mayor, the first Somali-American to run for state senate here in Minnesota. And I was the only elected official in Minneapolis. I was the only elected official in Minneapolis to endorse his campaign. But I know as time goes on, we will build stronger coalitions 
so the next generation will get more support and so that we can win elections. When I went to Kenya two years ago, I said, I have come this far. I must see Dada. I went to Dada, and I will never forget what I saw. I have never seen so much suffering. But now, with the new Somalia, we must close the dab. We must make sure that everybody has the opportunity to go home or to come to a new home here in America. I am running for mayor, and I ask for your support. Can people see back there? Yes? Wa Maha Sentin. Mega Agawal Mark Andrew. It is a joy to be with you tonight, as it was a joy to be with you last Saturday night at the huge jubilant reception celebrating the creation of Jubilant the state of Jubaland in Somalia, ending 21 years without leadership in that country, and the beginning of the healing of the deep wounds that have inflicted that country for so long, and now a healing, a healing in Somalia. It was a wonderful event. I thank the Somali community for inviting me to that event. It was a wonderful, wonderful honor to be with you. Just as the Somali community in the homeland is building a great nation across the ocean, the Somali community in America is helping to build the greatest city in the world, Minneapolis. And as the former Hennepin County Commissioner, who served 16 years helping our communities of color, helping the immigrant population, helping the new Americans, funding programs for inter language interpretation services, for culturally compatible social work, for child care support, and now running as for mayor of Minneapolis on a platform of embracing and loving the diversity of our community and delivering top quality schools for all of our children and delivering the cleanest and safest environment for all of our families and working for small business as an entrepreneur. I want to work with other entrepreneurs and small business people as your mayor. It is an honor to be here with you tonight. It is an honor to help you help us make Minneapolis all it can be. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I would like to remind the audience there is no clapping while the candidates speak. Please refrain from applauding um, their answers. Um, so we will get started with our first question. The first question is, what is your plan to help create jobs and prevent discrimination on the workplace in the city of Minneapolis. And with this first question, we will start back with Mark Andrew, and we'll work our way down. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have 90 seconds. Job creation is one of the single most important things that we can do for our community and our citizens. I have an excellent record as Hennepin County Commissioner both for employment in the workplace as well as employment in the community. I will continue to support job training programs and the expansion of job training for programs for our people. I will also continue to work on the successful record I had at Hennepin County in actually hiring more communities of color and more diverse populations into the Hennepin County workforce, which we were successful doing. I'm also very proud to, um, to state that I was the chief author of the Hennepin County Affirmative Action Program, which led to many advances in hiring and rights for our 12,000 employees at Hennepin County.
the best thing we can do to create jobs is to get the city of Minneapolis out of the way of small businesses like Safari Restaurant and to help small businesses grow. I'm so proud to be endorsed by Jamal Hashi, who owns Safari, and to make sure that the next generation has the opportunity to do better for their children. I'm so proud to be endorsed by Yomani Mabratu and Idi Ali from the Somali Cab Drivers Association in order to make sure that everybody has the opportunity to work for a living wage job. The city of Minneapolis must make it easier for small businesses. This is why I'm running for office. I also believe that without justice, we cannot have equality in our society. That is why, when there was a proposal to eliminate the Civil Rights Department's ability to take complaints, I voted no. We need a strong Civil Rights Department in our community to make sure that we have just justice for the next generation. We also must make sure that when we create jobs in the community, those jobs go to people who live in the community. I will put Minneapolis first by making sure that city residents get jobs on city projects. And that means that we are employing the people in South Minneapolis when we fix our roads, when we build buildings, when we build affordable housing. This is how we will bring back the economy. This is how we will fight racial discrimination in our community. And this is how we will end poverty in South Minneapolis. I believe that uh, jobs are one of the most important aspects of economic development. We focus on jobs meaning that we get the kind of business development that has a lot of employment for our people, then I think um, we're on the right track. That's why I voted for the stadium, because the stadium was going to be an economic engine to drive the development of the, that side of the city that had been undeveloped for many years, and now the Ryan Companies has brought in its own large development. And between both of them, there are going to be 10,000 jobs. It's 10,000 jobs, and, um, and, and more development is coming for additional jobs. And when I, when I uh, approved the stadium, I made sure I wrote into the agreement with the state the requirement that they must meet the standard of 32% participation by minorities. That had never been done before in the city of Minneapolis, and that was part of the agreement. And I believe that we need jobs for, through small businesses on our corridors, and we must reduce the red tape that city by the Civil Rights Department to make sure that all progress made in the Twin Cities will be participated in by all people, all minorities, and all sectors of the community, because if we don't rise together, then our city will be inequitable, and injustice will eventually lead to unsustainable progress. Well, we started the evening hearing folks talk about the American dream and that what people really want is an opportunity. And so at the city, it's our job to do two things. One is get out of the way of the opportunities that folks want to create for themselves. We do need to make sure that small business development is encouraged, promoted, and made easy to do. We want folks to be investing in the city of Minneapolis. It creates jobs for you and the people that you hire. We also need to be creating all kinds of development all around the city and make it possible for people to get there. When we do permanent investments in transit infrastructure, people uh, invest permanently around that. So we need good light rail lines and streetcar lines, really good enhanced bus service so people know that they can create those jobs there for people here in Minneapolis. We also need to do education and training. We need to make sure we have the skilled workforce we need for the future. We need to make sure that we are doing training programs so folks are ready to take the jobs that are coming as we head into this economic recovery. The commitment I make to, to you is that, one, there will be someone in Mayor Hodge's office, a, a Somali community member who is a liaison to the community who helps me be the eyes and ears, who helps me the eyes and ears in my office for the community and is my eyes and ears in the community to work on these issues. And also to have a Somali Advisory Council, a group of leaders from around the community with whom I will sit and talk on a regular basis to get information about all sorts of issues 
including job creation. What do we need to do? What's getting in the way of making it happen? That's my commitment to the community. I think there's no more important issue facing the city of Minneapolis right now than job creation. And we have to create jobs for our residents. I'm not waiting to do that till I become elected mayor. Right now I'm working with Summit Academy. And we have included the Somali community in the uh, jobs and training opportunities that are being developed about around the $1 billion project of the stadium. They are a partner, they are part of the opportunities, and they will get some jobs. I'm working on that today. I helped write that proposal. Secondly, we need to strengthen small businesses. The best way people create jobs in an economic downturn or any time is by creating small businesses. And we need to connect those businesses to procurement and so that they can get the contracts with the city. And I'm committed to hiring a Somali person in our licensing and regulatory services department so there's someone there who can work with Somali-owned small businesses. With regard to the Civil Rights Department, I have always been a strong supporter of the Civil Rights Department. My record on the City Council when I was there is absolutely clear. I've always supported the Civil Rights Department, and I will continue to do so. And in fact, I'll take it one step further. The wonderful woman who is running the Everyone In initiative right now, that position, that equity position, where everything is looked at about through fairness and equity, that woman needs to be promoted. That needs to be a cabinet level position at the city. Not hidden in the Civil Rights Department, but elevated to where it belongs to ensure that we have someone who is really looking at and really committed to and responsible for connecting and creating jobs in our city. Thank you. So the next question is, uh, as mayor, how will you address youth issues in our city? particularly the um, gang violence, unemployment, and homelessness. And we could start with uh, Mark Andrew. Actually, sorry, with uh, Gary Schiff. As a city council member for the last 12 years in South Minneapolis, I have worked with this community, I have worked with the Somali community, the Latino community, the African American community, and the American Indian community on gang prevention programs in order to help our youth. We must make sure that each adult has a meaningful relationship with each child to make sure that they can show them the way, to make sure that every child has hope in their eyes for the future. When children don't have hope, they think that a gang can provide them with an opportunity, but that's not true. I will fight to make sure that every child has the opportunity to be safe on the streets of Minneapolis and to be safe in the community. I will make sure that we fund opportunities to keep kids off the streets, to keep kids engaged in schools, to keep kids engaged with parks, with sports programs, and to give access to summer jobs so that youth can find ways to be employed in our community. We must treat our youth as we want to be treated ourselves. We must make sure that we never forget that the next generation will not succeed. There is no greater investment we can make than in our youth. I have worked to end youth homelessness. I have worked to end youth violence. I will make sure as mayor to put the priorities of a youth in our community at the front of my agenda. We must end the disparities and the poverty that threaten the future of our community. Together, we can make this progress. Can you repeat the question? So I just want to remind everybody of um, no clapping right now. And the question is, as mayor, how will you address youth issues in our city, particularly uh, gang violence, unemployment, and homelessness? Well, uh, early in my political career, I started an organization called the Peace Foundation. And the Peace Foundation had a youth component called Northside Youth Stand Up. And we worked with the youth. We had weekend events, uh, parties that were well monitored and making sure that those kids had somewhere to go on the weekends and, uh, and that they were well monitored and chaperoned. It was out of the, the, the North Side Youth Stand Up that we met a young lady named Zaina Ahmed, who um, was 14 years old and living by herself and, and, and working and going to school at 14 years old. 
And we adopted her into the, our family, and she's now Zena Samuels. And uh, so we, we, we take this thing seriously. It's about the youth. It's about doing whatever it takes to protect them. That's why when I become mayor, I'm going to have a relationship with the six families in North Minneapolis that are producing most of the gang bangers. I'm going to go talk to them and tell them about a plan. A plan to give them an opportunity for their children to go to school under a special program of supervision and for adults to get to work. And if they don't go along with that, then there's only one other way to go. And, but we're going to provide a guidance and intimate interaction with those families. And then we're going to make sure we expand this step up program and make it truly an outstanding premier program in the, in, this, in the nation where we employ people, young people, and make it from 2,000 a year. My goal is to make it 3,000 young people a year in the step up program. Well, in the city of Minneapolis, we have a lot of plans and a lot of programs that address some of these issues. We have a, we have a plan to end homelessness called Heading Home Hennepin. We have a youth violence prevention plan. Uh, we have uh, youth opportunity centers that you know are available for young people, hopefully getting them within the first 48 hours of being outside their home. Uh, and we do a lot of work to stabilize families in the city of Minneapolis. The work we do on housing, the work we do on transit and transportation, the work we do on job creation. Those can all stabilize families and stabilize neighborhoods. The critical question tonight is, are all of those plans and are all of those programs serving the Somali community well? Are our Somali youth being served really, really well by each and every one of those plans? Are we doing enough? And it is important in the city of Minneapolis, always, and especially right now, to make sure that when we are opening our Youth Opportunity Center as part of Heading Home Hennepin, that we are making sure there are folks there who can work with Somali young people. Not only ones who come through the door, but that can the outreach workers recognize what it looks like for a Somali young person to be in distress is that it look culturally different than it looks uh, from other organizations and other people. Um, those are the questions that we need to ask. Those are the questions I'm committed to asking and answering as mayor of Minneapolis. It's part of the reason I will have someone in my office. It's part of the reason I will have an advisory council to make sure that the services we have are well tailored to meet the needs of all our young people, including our Somali young people. Well, first of all, I want to say that Somali parents are good and wonderful parents. And as a parent of a 16-year-old, I too am concerned about my young people, just as you are concerned about your young people. As the, uh, one of the founders of the Youth Coordinating Board, uh, which is an uh, institution at the, city, at the city, we need to ensure that the Youth Coordinating Board has representation of Somali youth on that board. And I will work to strengthen that board. As someone who was one of the first people to uh, promote and support a uh, youth homeless organization and youth homeless place for homeless youth to live, we need to do more of that. We need to have more of those opportunities. Our future depends on how we take care of our youth. And we need to invest in our youth, and we need to have programs that invest in our youth. But they need to be programs that are not just developed by bureaucrats downtown. They need to be programs that are developed in partnership with the community, with the parents, the youth organizations, and the young people themselves to ensure that the programs that are developed indeed reflect the needs, the aspirations, and the issues facing the community. I was also a co-founder of the Minneapolis Youth Coordinating Board. And the Minneapolis Youth Coordinating Board now is uh, a very effective, but but uh, an organization that also needs to grow. And I, as I have stated in public meetings before, the city's responsibility to our kids is going to be articulated and addressed through an expanded Minneapolis Youth Coordinating Board, which is going to have a more prominent presence in the communities and a more prominent relationship with the Minneapolis School Board, the Minneapolis Park Board, and the Hennepin County Boyle Center I favor the city playing a major role in developing a far better and more accessible facility on or near that site, as well as other community centers uh, around the city. In addition to that, 
uh, I am advocating for in my work with the Minneapolis School Board that we try to make our teaching population look more like the students they are teaching. And we're going to have an aggressive effort to link culturally compatible teaching talent along with our students in the schools to give our youth a greater opportunity to learn. Thank you. Um, our third question uh, will focus on um, small businesses. What will you do as the mayor of Minneapolis to support small businesses and Somali shops in places such as Carmel Mall um, and uh, the Mall 24? I hope you guys know what those are. So we'll start with Dan Samuel. Well, uh the city of Minneapolis owes a debt of gratitude to the Somali community and the development of Lake Street and the vitality of South Minneapolis. No doubt about it. Basically, you save South Minneapolis um, or ex uh, expedited the, the return of South Minneapolis to economic uh, vitality. And it is the obligation of the city to strengthen that. And by the way, I want to make sure that when we build that stadium, that you'll be able to go up to a Somali concession stand and buy a falafel in, in the, Viking, the new Viking Stadium. Uh, Somali businesses should be represented along with other businesses in everything the city touches. Right? And, and, uh, and I will make sure that happens. And uh, I, I think that the Somali community in South Minneapolis can become what the arts community in Northeast Minneapolis is, a tourist attraction. Where, where ethnic foods and, and the ethnic flair can be experienced and the city can point to this through the, through the um, Convention and Visitors Association as a place for our visitors to go to experience Africa and, and all of the smells and sounds and sights that, um, that are, can be experienced in South Minneapolis. This is an asset to the city and we ought to broadcast it and make sure all our visitors are pointed to it and it becomes a feature of our community. The future of Minneapolis depends upon people being able to make investments in Minneapolis that benefit themselves and their families and the entire community. That's how we are going to grow and prosper as a city. So the first thing I would say is the things that we need to do to help Somali small business owners are the same things we need to do as a city to help small business and small business owners. Like I said before, we need to get out of folks' way. There are a lot of people who want to make an investment in the city of Minneapolis, and we make it harder on folks to do that than we need to. So what we need to do is take a look at our regulatory code, we need to take a look at what it takes to start a business, and we need to simplify it, we need to make it as easy as possible for everybody. To the extent that there are any other barriers that come up, we need to address those as well. But that is what the future of the city looks like is individual entrepreneurs making an investment in their neighborhood, in the city, and then growing that investment over time and helping other people come along up with them. Sometimes together in groups as you find at the Carmel Mall and sometimes as individual business owners uh, along Lake Street or along Grow West Broadway or wherever people are making those investments. We are a cosmopolitan city. We are increasingly a cosmopolitan city. Folks from all over the world come here, make investments here. It's one of the biggest assets we have as a city, is the fact that we have so many different communities here. We need to attend to that, make, help that flourish, and promote that as something that's really wonderful about the city of Minneapolis, and that will be my job as mayor. You know, we, we keep hearing the phrase that uh, the government needs to get out of the way. I totally agree. But the question is, what does that mean? First of all, for me, what that means is in the business department downtown, in the licensing and regulatory department, we need to have Somali-speaking people working with the small businesses that are located there. I'm committed to hiring a Somali-speaking people, or more than one, in fact, to work with our business and regulatory services division. Secondly, we need to improve access to capital. 
One of the things I hear from the businesses is it's very difficult to get money, it's difficult to get a loan. When you try to work with CPED, you can't get a loan. And we need to improve that, we need to figure that out, and I'm committed to straightening that out and ensuring that we have a loan and grant program that works for the business community. We also need to provide business and management education so that people have the right kind of support they need to run their business. And then we need to connect those businesses to city contracts and opportunities. Right now, it's what I hear from the business community is you aren't able to get your share of the contracts that are given by the city of Minneapolis. You aren't participating in that. We need to fix that. We need to ensure that the community can participate and grow their small businesses by having access to government and other contracts. I've done that before when I was on the city council. I'm prepared to do that again. But we need to be specific about what we're going to do. And that means we need to provide access to capital, training, and opportunity, and we need to have people in the offices down there to speak the language that can work with the businesses. I think all of the candidates pretty much agree on all of the remedies that have been talked about relating to small business and the success of small business. Making capital more available, yes. Helping our, our citizens and helping our existing small businesses um, attract business, attract customers, get financing for their business, assisting with hiring. All of those things are legitimate functions of the city to provide support for small business. The problem that we have right now as the only non-city council person sitting at this table is that some of the problems that have derived inside the city have continued for a lot of years. I believe very strongly and actually agree with what uh, Councilmember Cherryholm said about making sure that we are doing hiring, especially in licensing and regulatory services. So number one, people can understand what the other person is saying. Number two, so we can actually have a culture change that allows for that department to say rather than here's why you can't do something, to say, here's how we're going to help you succeed as a small business. I am an entrepreneur. I am a small business owner. I am very proud that I've made my living as a small business owner for 14 years. I am very committed, just as I have been with the 2,000 employees that I have employed over the time of my small business ownership, that we do a better job working with our small business community, women-owned businesses, and entrepreneurs to succeed in our community. The Twin Cities Business Journal and over 200 small business owners who have endorsed my campaign agree. I am the leading voice for small businesses on the Minneapolis City Council. I have worked closely on Lake Street with so many small business owners over the last 12 years, including many business owners from the Somali community, like Osman Ali. When he wanted to open his restaurant at Cedar and Lake, I helped him to work through a landlord, to work through issues with the neighborhood, and to work with parking issues. When Juba Cafe got citations from the city, I worked with them to help them understand city code and to stay open longer so that they could make more money and serve the needs of the community. The city of Minneapolis is regulating businesses with a code that was written 50 years ago. A modern city needs a modern code. On day one, I will begin the rewrite of the Minneapolis Regulatory Code for Small Businesses and direct the city attorney to include you, the community, for advice to write a new set of rules that make sense for a growing city. Small businesses are important for every family to earn a living wage job and supply over 50% of the jobs in Minneapolis. I will be a small business advocate, one who makes sure that Minneapolis remains one of the best places for opportunity for entrepreneurs from all over the country, but especially for people who grow up in Minneapolis, for people who come here to find a better life for their families, and for everybody who wants to see a local sustainable economy. Thank you. Um, so a few of you have mentioned creating Somali advisory boards. But um, what strategies would you deploy to recruit and uh, recommend qualified Somalis in 
in uh, leadership positions and uh, city boards. And we'll start with Councilmember Hodges. I am campaigning the way I mean to govern, which means that built into my campaign plan from day one uh, was having a, an organizer from the Somali community as part of my campaign team. Osman has been on, many of you know him, he's waving. Uh, he's been on the team since day one, uh, and he is helping me build relationships in the community, and he is helping me build my platform. That's one of the top things that I will need to do and that I am doing uh, as a mayoral candidate and that I will do as mayor is make sure that I'm building relationships in the community because that's one of the best ways to identify and build leadership throughout the city. I also make sure that when we start this year, as we start recruiting people to serve on city boards and commissions, uh, I ask that the Step Up grads, there are 16,000 uh, people who've been through the Step Up program, I've asked that they be included in the recruitment pool to be on our boards and commissions, to have leadership at the city level. I want folks to have experience at every level in the city. So if any of you are interested in serving on a city board or a commission, please let me know. I'm happy to hook you up with those opportunities. And as mayor, I will have a number of opportunities to hire leaders from the community to serve uh, as leaders in our departments and to serve as leaders in the city. I have that commitment. I have a commitment to make sure that we have as diverse a leadership as we can possibly have in the city of Minneapolis. Our future depends on it. It's what our future looks like. I am proud to have the endorsement of the African American Caucus, of the Latino Caucus, and of the Union SEIU. Some of you know um, Abiraha Muse, who is one of their key organizers. It's that sort of faith and confidence, that sort of leadership it's going to take to make sure that we can get the leadership that we need. But for me, it's not just about having outreach so that I can have votes. It's about having a seat at the table. It's about being a partner with the community and the community being a partner with me for the long term. I am really proud that when I was on the city council, I hired one of the first African-American staff people to work on the third floor of City Hall. I am really proud that when I was there, Mayor Sharon Sales Belton, who was working on my campaign and supporting me, we had one of the most diverse leadership teams this city has ever seen. And we will absolutely do that again. I am committed to doing that. I'm not going to sit up in City Hall and decide who the appropriate leadership is. I'm going to reach into the community. I'm going to listen to people. I'm going to make connections, build on the connections I already have to ensure that people on my staff the people in all ranks of city government, from the police department, to the city attorney's office, to every place in the city, that there are opportunities for Somali people to be present, represented, and part of the leadership and the decision making in the city of Minneapolis. Please do not clap. Please. Thank you. Several of the candidates, as have I, have talked about creating positions directly inside or as an adjunct to the mayor's office uh, to create greater access to city government for East African and other populations. We will do that. I have no doubt that whoever gets elected mayor is going to do that. We have also talked about, several of us, about establishing an advisory committee from the community that will come to us and will have direct access to the city and directly to the mayor's office. And I have no doubt that any member of the city council or myself will do that if elected mayor. It's a very important thing to do. Uh, and I also believe that I will um, repeat my excellent performance on the county board to opening access to communities of color uh, as I did in Hennepin County where we increased hiring. We increased hiring not only for line staff positions but for higher level positions as well. We will undertake that same mission in the city of Minneapolis and I will do that as your mayor. But the most important thing I think I can do as the mayor is work with a Somali member of the city council and ask that person to be a direct link into the community. 
the mayor, none of us, has all of the answers on how to embrace the East African community to maximize their involvement. But we are on the verge of electing a Somali city council member who will sit right next to me and work with me to develop these strategies to open up our government to all communities in Minneapolis. For the last 12 years as a city council member, I've been very inspired by the leadership of Senator Amy Klobuchar. And I've worked closely with Siad Ali from her office. And I'm so proud to have Siad Ali's endorsement because we need to make sure that every office in City Hall is diverse. Not just my office, but the police department, the fire department, the public works department. We must make sure that the hiring of the city of Minneapolis represents and reflects the diversity of our people. That is the only way that we as a city can come together as one city. We also have the most Somali television shows in the world produced right here in Minneapolis through the Minneapolis Television Network. I will make sure to continue the funding of Minneapolis Television Network to make sure that valuable community access programs become accessible and remain accessible in every household in our community. And for the last 12 years, I've run a bilingual office in City Hall. I will make sure as mayor to also have a multilingual office so any citizen can call. And that's why in my first term on the City Council, I passed a resolution that is today law that everything the City of Minneapolis does is translated in every language that is requested. That is the city we live in today. That is how it works if you call 311. I will make sure to continue that legacy, to continue to make sure that everything we do is accessible in every language of the people who live in the city of Minneapolis. I'm very much in tune with the issues of the immigrant and how easy it is to feel alienated and isolated. That's why I oppose when we Took, we reduced the, the staff by taking away the receptionist from City Hall because to have someone from speaking a different language from a foreign land come up and just see an empty desk. You know, these are the kind of insensitivities we have when we deal with uh, communities that are uh, struggling to fit in. Now, I'm going to have a Somali uh, uh, employee in the mayor's office representing your community and advising me. I'm going to make sure that whatever we create to get advice from your community. We're going to ask you to pick people who are fair, who are not into tribalism, but can, it's fair across all tribes and can represent every single one in this community. I'm going to make sure that uh, 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 we, we, we grow the police force from in the Somali community. We have two cops now who received the two top honors in the police force for 2013, in the last uh, award ceremony. We can expand that, and I want to see a Somali girl or two on the police force so they can deal with the Somali female issues and safety issues with dignity. And I want to make sure that um, we have uh, uh, programs at City Hall that addresses address the language issues of your community and so that uh, everybody feels welcome and nobody feels left out. Thank you. Um, our next question deals with um, education. As many of you know, um, a, a lot of us in the Somali community are very fond of having children, so we tend to have many. Um, and education is really important to us as it is to many immigrant communities. Um, this, and it's really important um, that, that everybody gets a, a really good chance starting out in regards to education. Um, that is a, a very important indicator of where you end up um, later on in life. So this question asks, what is your plan to improve early childhood education in the city of Minneapolis? And this is one of the audience questions. And we'll start with Jackie. 
Well, it's very clear that education is a very important value in the Somali culture. And early childhood education is where it all begins. Every child needs an opportunity and needs to be prepared to go to school. I'm really proud that when I was on the city council, I was one of the people who expanded the Head Start program and helped build a number of early childhood centers throughout the Twin Cities, or throughout Minneapolis. Um, I've also worked at Phyllis Wheatley Community Center to uh, build a new quality daycare center and ch early childhood center for them. Early childhood is something that has to be accessible and it has to be available to every child in this city. I will work with the state of Minnesota where new funds were just uh, uh, allocated for early childhood to bring those funds to Minneapolis to ensure that every child has a bright future, every child and every family has an opportunity to have early childhood education. I thank the person who submitted that question because early childhood education is the linchpin of the long-term success of Minneapolis's children. It is no secret to anybody in this room that early childhood programs work. They save money, they improve the lives of our children, they reduce poverty over time, and they ought to be expanded. And yet, for many years until this legislative session, we have floundered as a community and as a state in delivering these programs. With the infusion of new early childhood dollars, recently to execute a program for major early childhood expansion driven by the mayor's office, this is what we are going to do. First of all, my campaign has been working on an early childhood blueprint for several months. The person who founded Ready for K an early childhood pioneer, we are putting together a strategy that is going to garner support not only from the legislature, but from the philanthropic community, from the corporate community, from the schools, from Hennepin County and Minneapolis, and we will target those early childhood dollars to the kids who need it most, aimed at closing the achievement gap that exists between white and non-white students in Minneapolis. That's job number one. Secondly, in the area, I have to stop. My mother is a public school teacher, and I know that she loves kids. And that's why I have three brothers and two sisters. I've seen a lot in the last 12 years representing the Ninth Ward and the City Council. My district is 50% people of color. 50% renters, where one out of three children grow up under the federal poverty line. I am committed to creating an early childhood investment fund in the city of Minneapolis to make sure that the funding for programs don't change from year to year. I've seen so many initiatives stopped once the headlines went away. I want to make sure that we sustain our funding by putting money into a fund called the Early Childhood Investment Fund that will focus on prenatal health care, that will focus on early access to Head Start, to efforts that help fight multi-generational poverty by making sure that every child in our community has equal access to learn and to grow. There is nothing that children can have I have worked with neighborhoods that I represent, including Phillips, to make sure that more kids get access to college, to make sure that we decrease the dropout rate, and to make sure that every child has access to quality education. They say that uh, by the time you're in, before you're in third grade, you learn to read. After third grade, you read to learn. If you're not reading by third grade, you're in trouble as a student, and you're much more likely to drop out of high school or to out of school. And that is why early childhood is important. That is why uh, after I started the Peace Foundation, and we realized that uh, most of the homicides were committed by, almost all of them, by young people who did not graduate from high school, we made a, a pipeline into college and work for all the children who live in the zone in North Minneapolis. And as mayor, I'm going to expand the Northside Achievement Zone to the Minneapolis 
Achievement Zone to guarantee that all our children are ready for school and are, uh, and are learning to read and able to read to learn. And we have parents coming into the Northside Achievement Zone from uh, pregnancy, learning the relationship between how to read, how to nurture your child, and how to get that child to learn. They learn, for instance, that the average middle class family says 5,000 supportive words to their children, negative words. The average poor family says 800 positive words and 2,500 negative words. We know what works. The science has told us what works. All we have to do is apply it. And as your mayor, I will be the most sophisticated, advanced, knowledgeable person as a mayor in this city and one in the country around education for our children, and especially early childhood. Minneapolis has what's called one of the biggest achievement gaps in the country between kids of color and white kids in terms of achievement in education. But really what it is, is it's a whole series of opportunity gaps that start before a kid is, go is born and extend long into the time that they become adults. And as a city, we have different opportunities at different points to make an impact on reducing and eliminating those gaps. And as a city, one of the key places we can act is in the prenatal to three-year-old, preparing a kid to be ready for early childhood education. When a kid is born healthy, when a kid is born with you know, everything they need to thrive in, out in the world, and then they have healthy options and opportunities up until the time they're three. That is the point at which they can start taking advantage of early childhood education in the same ways and at the same rates that other kids do. It's also a place where the city is really well set up to have programs that can support moms and kids in that age range. Our health department is doing some of the biggest work in this area of anybody in the city. It's one of the best places we have to have an impact. And I have fought hard over time to save our health department from potential cuts for just this reason, because that's where the work is happening. And so uh, as mayor, I want to make sure we are expanding that work. We are leveraging the work that we can do uh, with, with moms who are expecting kids and those young kids zero to three. There's a lot we can do after that in terms of partnerships, but that's one of the key things the city can do with me as mayor. Thank you. Um, so this is the last question, and this question is from the Minneapolis Taxi Cab Association. Um, they ask, uh, when you get elected, what will you do to help the taxi drivers in Minneapolis with issues like police harassment and excess traffic tickets? And we'll start with uh, Mark Andrew. Uh, yeah, Mark Andrew, yeah. The taxi drivers of Minneapolis are a valued group of people who put a best foot forward to visitors to our community and our residents who live here. It is a valuable service, it is an honorable profession, and it is very important to the city of Minneapolis. I favor the city undertaking policies that will develop programs uh, to prevent crimes, to make the um, cab drivers and the police department better connected, particularly when cab driving is happening in off hours when crimes are more likely to happen. I think there is a uh, functional gap between the police force and the cab drivers. There is frequently not a, a collegial sense of communication and mutual support, and I think that's something that's got to be addressed within the police force. I also favor, in the long term, the development of a retirement type program for our cab drivers. Cab drivers work hard. I used to be a taxi cab driver. I drove for two companies. I drove for Yellow Cab and I drove for Red and White. I loved being a cab driver. It was very fun, but it had drawbacks. It was dangerous at times. We didn't enjoy a very good relationship with the police department 
and there was no opportunity for retirement be benefits over time. As mayor, I would like to establish a task force to develop a program where cab drivers can plan for their futures and invest some of their earnings into a fund that will allow them to prosper and grow and live in comfort during their retirement years. That program is called the Medallion Program, and I'm sponsoring the legislation to bring it to Minneapolis. We want to make sure that when you pass on after 20, 30 years of work, you have something to give to the next generation. The vehicle is not worth much after 20, 30 years, but the medallion can be passed on to the next driver as something of worth that can pay for retirement. I know about parking tickets and harassment. When Abubakar Sadiq Mosque in my ward came to me with complaints that during prayer time, everybody who came to the mosque got parking tickets. I worked to make sure that that harassment stopped. And today, there are no longer parking tickets handed out to people who go to Abubakar Sadiq Mosque. I also am so proud to have the endorsement of the blue and white cab driver uh, company and to make sure that there is no tolerance for harassment in the city of Minneapolis. My first term on the city council, I passed a law that made it illegal for the police or other city employees to ask a resident of Minneapolis about their immigration status. That law passed and we are a better city today because of it. Taxi drivers are the welcomers to the city of Minneapolis. You get in a taxi at the airport, the first person you meet is uh, a taxi driver, and uh, the first person you have a chance to ask about the city is a taxi driver. Your first impression of the city is a taxi driver. So we have to honor our taxi drivers, and um, we have to have a different attitude towards all our workers, that we don't value people who make less as being less human, but that we value each person's work as important, especially those who do the hardest work. And that's, that is why I'm going to be very supportive of our taxi drivers and the folks who are in the roads paying positions. I want to make sure that um, our police department is sensitized. And I think that your taxi drivers organization needs to have an input with the police chief on a regular basis to give feedback about how, what kind of experiences the, the taxi drivers are having. And that there's a constant feedback with our CPED department and our licensing department about the kinds of experiences our taxi drivers are having. It should not have to come to a problem, uh, an harassment incident, or a, a, a violent in incident, or a homicide, before we begin to have that conversation. It must be an ongoing conversation with taxi drivers. What is your experience? What's working with you at the city? What is not working? What would you like to see? so that you begin to shape policy as, as participants in the economy of our city. Acceptable in any place in our city. As the person who helped institute the Police Civilian Review Board, I was appalled at the changes that were made to the Police Civilian Review Board. Citizens need to have a safe place to redress their grievances against the police, and I will work to reinstitute a strong civilian review board for taxi cab owners, other people, anybody who feels harassed, intimidated, or not treated right by the police will have an opportunity to go and get We need to have Somali representation in our licensing department, in our taxi cab department, and we need to have a civilian review board that reflects our community and provides an opportunity for people in our community to deal with their issues and to deal with police harassment. Um, thank you, everyone. Um, this brings us to our uh, closing remarks. And um, with the closing remarks, we'll start with uh, Mark Andrew. I mean, sorry, Gary Schiff. I'd like to thank everybody for being here and to Safari Hall for hosting tonight's event. This is not the first time I have been here. I was here earlier this week for an event for my campaign. I was here for the last several months. I've been here for the last several years since this business opened. 
This business was once a vacant building. But we can see the community that gets created when opportunity is given for somebody to invest and for somebody to help shape the face of our community. It has been such an honor for the last 12 years to work with the community from Somalia, Eritrea, Ethiopia, and from communities around the world who are helping to make Minneapolis a great growing city. Our city is changing, but our future is very bright. It is the youth of our city that hold the promise to make us the greatest city that we can be. I ask for your vote as mayor because I care so deeply about this community. I loved my time on the Minneapolis City Council and I want to continue the work we've done so that we can end poverty, create safe streets, build jobs that pay living wages, and decrease the gaps in education that threaten the future of our community. I ask for your support and I look forward to talking to you tonight and the weeks and months ahead throughout this campaign. Thank you so much. I'm pleased to be here and to talk to you for a few uh, minutes and uh, I'm thrilled to be running for mayor. I would like to be mayor of a city that is diverse and where everyone is included because we are one city. This is a great part of town. I want to make sure that everybody knows it. I want to make sure that we are part of the Meet Minneapolis plan, that you can meet Minneapolis here, you can meet uh, Southeast Asia here, you can meet Somalia here in the city of Minneapolis. I want to make sure that we have a sister city uh, relationship with a Somali city of your choice. I want to make sure that Somali small businesses are strong and vibrant and that City Hall red tape is reduced to facilitate that. I want to make sure that Somali young people are thriving in school because I know that immigrant communities honor education. They know that education is the way out and it's not right for a young person to be in school and being ignored. Our Somali daughter was in school and she had a language issues and so her math was way behind. The, the teacher saw that she was way behind and nobody was reaching out to her. We had to advocate for her. That should not be. We need a mayor who's going to make sure that the school district is sensitive to all populations, no matter who they are, and that failure by any child is unacceptable. And I want to make sure that we have improve our police force so that it is insensitive to the people of this community, whether you're a taxi driver or whatever you do, that your young people should not be harassed, and that um, we have uh, uh, training and sensitivity training for our police officers. And that's why I want to be your mayor, and I ask for your support. Well, I also want to say thank you to Safari for hosting us tonight. And I want to thank all of you for being here tonight. You have spent a lot of time listening to us tell you how great we are. Uh, and really the point of tonight is to talk about how great Minneapolis is, how great the community is, and how great every, everybody in this community is. And as mayor, my goal is to make sure that our, our kids and your kids are thriving. That we are creating jobs in this city where everybody has the opportunity to benefit from the jobs that we create in the city and people's ability to create those jobs themselves. That it's about a city where we have a, where public safety is safe and you feel safe when you call the police, that your, your issue will get handled and that it won't become about you. Where we have housing for people with every size family at every price point around the city. And that we are thinking about people's health and people's future. That's what we all want for Minneapolis. That's what I see as the future of Minneapolis. And the key is, is that it has to be about everybody. It has to be about all of us together. The only way you're going to know that I really mean that is when I am mayor and I'm doing what I've said I do here tonight. That's how you're going to know. You can take a look at what I've done the last eight years, and you can see that I do what I've said I do. Um, and as mayor, I will do what I've said I do here. And I've set up some accountability measures 
for myself as mayor that you will participate in, that you all are invited to participate in, so that you can hold my feet to the fire about what I said I'd do here. Because that's what it comes down to. Let's build the city we say we want. Let's become the city we say we are. I ask for your support. This has been a wonderful evening and a wonderful opportunity. And I so enjoyed being here earlier this month with a number of the leaders and, and getting to know folks better and talking one-on-one -on -one about issues. You know, the poet Yates said, in dreams begin responsibilities. In the Somali community, our city is safe, and can we make Minneapolis a livable city? I've helped run the city before. I know how to run the city. I know how to build community. I've been doing this all my life. In fact, uh, in my community, what people say is I walk my talk. If you look at my record, you know I do what I say I'm going to do. I'm proud that my campaign organization looks like our city, that everyone is at the table, that everyone is working to make our city stronger, better, and more welcoming. I'm running a truly grassroots campaign. It's a campaign of ideas, a campaign of action, and if elected mayor, that's how I'm going to govern, with ideas and action. I ask for your support to be your next mayor. Join us at our table back there. Meet anybody in a red shirt tonight and ask them about me, and they will tell you I do what I say I'm going to do. I work hard. I'm committed. I'm qualified, and I'm dedicated to building a strong city. I'd like to thank everybody for being here tonight. A special shout out to my wife, Connie, who's in the audience. Give us away, Connie. Who's here on behalf of our city and our two wonderful children. I also want to thank my colleagues for continuing to engage in a civil and frequently enlightening discussion. But mostly, I want to thank you and the Somali people who have taken so much of your time and invested so much of your energy and your love to make this city great, to build your families, and to be a part of this community. It is likely that you will be a deciding factor as to who the mayor of Minneapolis is going to be. It is an awesome responsibility. And just as your Somali brothers and sisters in the Somali homeland have achieved a wonderful thing with the establishment of the state of Jubilant. We are now poised to secure the support and the participation of the East African community to write a new chapter in Minneapolis history. I am excited for that. I am open for that. I embrace our community's diversity. I love it. It makes our city better, more interesting, smarter, more successful, more diverse, more talented. It's a win-win for everybody. I want to work with you as your next mayor. I have more elected experience than anyone sitting at this table. And I have a longer record of achievements. I will be honored to secure your support. Thank you. I would like to thank everyone and the candidates and the organizers of this event. Uh, we had a wonderful discussion today, so your one assignment here is now to get involved, right? Um, Ilhan Omar has just a few words to say. Thank you. Um, let's just give one round of applause to all the candidates. And give yourselves one round of applause for sticking with us as well. This was an honor. I would also like to remind those that have become um, a delegate um, for the city that this was a, a DFL uh, forum. So your, your responsibility now is to show up um, at the convention center June 15th if you are a delegate and hopefully make a decision on who you are going to become a delegate for and help get one of these wonderful candidates an endorsement. Um, so that's going to be June 15th at the city um, center.
Center in Minneapolis. Um, and I would like to thank all of you for coming again, and good night. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ما قاعد يقوله خالد أحمد محمد وحمانته مهد علينا يا نضطي كسوق يبقى له حلفة نقال قاعد شرفت له نقول عسمني نضغط مجالو إن كأثر تام يا مجالد من نيابلس من الصورة أنا قوله كم إذا هين دليرتي سوق مقابلي حفلة دن أو أنا قوي عسمني مشرحين تي أثر تام يي دق مجالد من نيابلس أو ح كده عي وقت تاريخ أه أو كده عي هر من الصورة بندق يعني توكو ساب سناي سؤال لو يدينا يا مير هذا مجال هذا وشرحن رير من السورة ومركي يقوله الرئيس إنه سكوت دبرنا أرين سدان وكلا أه أرين تاني توحيه مثل لا يابله أو دلسي قيرد بدن دت كسياسيين تا أما كون سياسيين تا هن يكون جن عسل يكون جن عسل تدا عن هن إيو أرين ما هو قصة إيو دت كدقيقة إنك دقيقة رير من السورة أرين ما هو قصة أحسن بلشدة أرين ما هو قصة أحسن دقن ك شقالي سين تا إيو غريها مركو حا مهم اه ان صومالي ذا اي براتو ان اي ليشان ان فاديسس اما لحظل داد کا اوتر تمايو ان اي اي دولد دا کا قيب خاتان سي اي او او قادان وقف کی اي اي قدان هو دا دان اي دون اي دو دي مركي لدورتو مركس ان عاو وحان او دواني إن أن كلا سعنا قفك أن نجا نودنا ناي يقفك أن نجا نجا دناي صندانو. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته مجاهد وعبد غادر حسن ما أنت محاد يأد شرفي أنا كسوق بقلو أنا كنا قضاء ندت كسوق بقابيا حفلة دني أو لوقة بتي سفاري أو دود دحم رئيسي مرياشا أو أردايان مجال هذا من نيابلس. دود داشی آمانت اوبن یه سوال هلو وی دیه سوال مهم و سومالی دا کمی سومالی کمیتی که دیگه من سر اسپشل منی آپولس سوپت سوال هلو وی دی و سوال آدی آد مهم و این داد که دیگه اوجادان مسواح لقبتو سوپت بالتیشن که داد که اردن مالن کشت وحیده هان مرکزی اردن وحیان او قبلا نه لکی نمانت مهد مالن تو اوجو هریسه ای سهر فرستن شعب کسومالیت و دیگه جاليد سوماليد دقن مينيابوليس السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته دمان دادوينها سوماليد دقن قبل كمينسورة قارهان توين سيريسكا مينيابوليس اي اقار كيضا وحان ربا انا لسو عسيو ان عوضا ارنتان سفاري كدا عدا اي تاي ميد هيستوريك اه تاريقي اه ما داما داد كيدا معصنا ان اي مقالة داني تمير كان نقضان ان او اما دان قرقين حافظنا زون كان دقنا إياك أو نقعدنا إن أي قاتان أما أي معنا نويدستان إن أن دورنا تا 
taas oo mid historiga laakiin mid kale aan rabay inaan dadku guubiyo waxay tahay unity ga dadka delegate la doortay inay unity ay noqdaan ay ku unite groobaan qofkii ay dooran lahaayeen for example aniga waxaan degana minneapolis north east minneapolis waxaan ahay delegate waxaan jaalaan lahaa dadka delegate ka oo dhan inay isku imaadaan oo Soomaali ahaan hal qof aan ku aansano si aan qofkaas ay aan ku dooran laheen mid kale waxaan rabaa halkan inaan ka sheego Elias Mao Mogadishu Times oo si dadaal leh isagu oo macnaha ka caajisin ka daarin markasta ku jira community isla markaas ay tana in caawiya markii ay noqoto inuu arimaha noocan amal uu faafiyo isagana waxaan rajeynayaa insha Allah ta'ala maal maalmaha kamida dadaalku ugu jiro isku xirka community ga iyo macnaha wax waaye dhacdooyinka community ga ay soo biyaan in lagu aqoonsado mar labaad waxaan rabaa halkaaniito inaan macnaha wax waaye aan ku xuso safari restaurant iyo group ka dambeeyay arintaaniito macnaha qiimaha iyo qaayaha leh oo qofna uu maantay is dhahayn arintan amal ayaa dhici doonta sababtoo ah ya is dhahay afar qof shan qof lix qof oo uu urday inay meer ka noqdaan magaaladan weyn isla markaasna imaanaya xaafadan deganeen meeshi aan anaka business ku lahayn meeshi maalin kasta aan fariisanayn ilmeen aan keenin ka cuntaynayn marka dadka nimanka isku dare hooshaas sameeyeen group ka sayto waa group macnaa waxa waaya aan inna ba'adihin taariikhda waxa yaba taariikhi ay soo biyeen in lagu support gareeyana salaam alaykum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh nabad gareey salaam alaykum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh magacay waxa la dhahaa liban aadan abdul qadir waxana ka soo qayb galay maanta soomaali kaakas dfl ka oo isloo keenay all the mayors oo magaalada oo ordeeyay mayraash maanta waxa laga hadlay arimo fiican soomaalida keentay dadkii dhan isku wada keeneen waxa laga hadlay arimihi soomaaliya oo soomaalida sameeyay oo dadka iskuulaha iyo waxa laga hadlay taxes ka iyo maxa laga laga hadlay houses ka waxa kala la hadlay maanta si dadka loo caawin lahaa ina wada imaano oo hal cod wada noqdo dadkii wuxuu soo jeesteen Soomaalida wuxuu ogaadeen Soomaalida inay yihiin political powerhouse oo dadkii power weyn haysan oo qof ka rabna in gelin ka nomeer governor marka arin fiican ba la wada waxa laga hadla iskoolashii ilmahaana si loo loo siin lahaa education fiican hada ilmahaana education fiican siino waxa way dadkeena future ka si fiican bay u helayna good ahaan wada salaamaya waxaan jooga هول كوين سفاري مينيابلس ما أنت وحكي ده على حفلة أحد وين أو إيه كسوق بجلان دتك أوتر تمي ميرس كم جالا ده مينيابلس دتك أصو ميدول بأصو بندقي أجندين كيسي إياه وحي أو كقام الله هم جالا ده وحفر حد إيه إني ما أنت كده على ترتن كاس أو إيه كسوق بجلان دت بدنا الصماليد أيوه مدول بأوشيج يوقف أهان يسيد ومتك كله وجد سنيا هاي متك كوري سدنا عبال سجيسة يو أجندة ذا سيد بزنس كوس بورت كرين لها هذا كت تكسيل ياشا مقالة جوجا دب كلو هاي وسوه هو قبل لها سيد مقالة غريها عشرة أو كروك عاي ودب أم هاس وقول إجلها مركو أرين أدو مهما أدبان وفرح سنة هاي شخصي أهان أنا مقعي جبادر اسمه حاش إنه كسو قب كلا أرين تاس أيضا آه بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم مقعي جو حلا جوت علي وحنا كنا مقالة من يابلس وحنا نقص أدن ماي رئيس نقص أدن ما أنت إيفان قروح بدنا ماشي عن نقص مهي حزب قدم مقادي أو دي أفلك أو أوتر تماي دتك كان ريتك أو كلا أوتر تماي أو حزب قدم مقادي كنا ربابلكان كما ها أو المقعي سنو كلا سوكا ولا يقان دي أفلك مركا إيفان قروح بدنا بعد كده شيء أنا أرمها سمعوا إنفولس بدنا بكل يهين بكوس واحد دقيقة يهين ورله يور إيت إلى يور تري إن من يابلو سنو سدح تمون كورو دقيقة يهين سمعوا بدنا بعد دلقة يده ودتك أسي أبدي يهين دد ووين مركا إيفان إن إيفان قروح بدنا وحلو قبت السفاري صاحب كي عبد الرحمن أردت أ كده بي وسيف عنو قبتي مركا وحن أرجعنا مدة سمعوا إنك إن إنك كسوق قب جلان جون ففتين ك وحدة عيتون تكوفيشن كمن يابلس وحلوق من دونا ماير خوفك إن قلها كان ليتك بالوجو إن دورس جرنك بالوجو إن دورس جرن دونا مركز دتك سومان البوليس دتك الدجن حافظ استحيتونك استحيتونك حافظ من يابلس كومنت هاي أنا إيمادان أنا كده يبتان خوفك إن دورس جرنه Thank you السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته مقعي وعبد الرشيد علمي سينبا إن وحن هاي دتك دورشة ده إن ماير هذا إن قبل قابيني إن هتل كن سفاري إن هالكاسو إن محو هاي ما يرد اللي جود اللي هو يدي سؤال بدن أو خصية عرنتا إن سومالي ذا إن يجو سؤال بدن اللي هو يدي سؤال هذا أو أي كم ذا هاي إن دنا عوح برشة ذا 
een dhinaca heer staatka waxbarashada dhinaca shaqooyinka ee shuruucda ee sidiga ee muxuu ahaayay iyo arrimo badan oo kale assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakat damaan dadweynaha Soomaaliyeed ee ku nool magaalada Minneapolis waxaan ku hanbalaynaa kulankan caawa aan ku qabanay goobtan safari taariikhda tahay juun sodonkoodeeda oo ku sabeysna tartan doodeed dhex maray dadka musharaxiinta ee magaalada duqa magaalada Minneapolis waxa farxad weyn iyo aniga oo ka mid ah bulshada iyo jaaliyada Minneapolis inuu kulankaas caawa noogu dhacay si aad iyo aad u qurux badan waxaan xaqeen rabaa inaan ka salaamo shacabka Soomaaliyeed meel walba ay joogaan hadii gobolkan ku nool yihiin iyo hadii kaloba kulankani macquul ma ahaadeen inuu sidaas hufan oo qurux badan u dhaco hadii san bulshada Soomaaliyeed ay san isugu iman ama jaaliyada Soomaaliyeed dalin yarab aad u badan ويلال إيه قبل سوو جرا أيا أرين تن كسو شقيي مدنا كسو شقيين أيه وحبي حبي إن كلن كان أودع سو ناقصن مركا أنا دين تعبان أيا كلن كان عاو حكو كل ماي شن كانديت أما شن مشرحين وودر تم أيا دق مقالة من يابلس شن تاسو أهرون هانتي شن شخصيات أو شن تبا قيمة وين كله كوميونيتي كسومالي ده مركا واحد هبون هذان نحب الشيء من يابل يسكن نور ما دام هو صوص عضو الالكشن كي دقة مقالة ده بيشن كوي تبنات شن يتبان كي ده سنة كان هدوء بها ودر هذا كان عضو هنا نسيحه وصوب بحنا عن كتاب في عن حوجلة عن كقاعدة نو سأوك سنتين قبل سنتين بدن ودن كان مراكن وحوي قفك بين آدم كا أما كوميونيتيو وحمودين هاي وينو قفك وشقة يستوى حل يراد احترام أما الرسبت احترام كاس وحا كينا ودن كينا كنا لنا أما جالي أما برشيد أنا كنا لحنا لنا أي لا بس يا بود أوجد مدو وحا ويا أود وحا كينتا نمبر كا إن الدتك النمبر ليهين من وحا كينتا إن الدقائل ليهين مركا إن وقت يرا سومالي كنا ولد مقالة من يابلس الله قياسه إن كير لبعض تنسنا وحا مودا إن جولة آد ووين إيه كجارين حق واحد برشة ده حق بع مشتركة حق سفل سيرفيس كا ده اللي يرد بدنه واحد جرا بوليسا ده اللي يرد شريفة جرا ده خاتير باجرا معلمين باجرا أرضي آدي آدو حبون باجرا تاسع إن آدي آد بنقول هل وين هاي شعب سومالي ماشي جارين وعند الرجال هنا شعب والبو سومالي ما هو اللي بحكون ولا دين سيد الرير من يابلس إنه سوي مدان إسكتوا مان وحوا دقب سدان. ايوه احنا نقضان